Italy has set another record for the most deaths from coronavirus in a single day. Nearly 1,000 people have died in the past 24 hours. That brings the total death toll to more than 9,000. That's the highest number of any country, and health officials say the worst may be yet to come. Hospital wards are still full, although doctors say the number of patients is now steadying. Contagion rates appear to be slowing as well, giving hope that the strict social controls in effect may be working. But the lockdown is hitting the Italian economy hard. Churches and charities are struggling to care for people in need of basic supplies. All right, let's bring in journalist Seema Gupta. She's following the situation from Rome. Seema, first, of course, just let's talk about that, that shocking number, nearly 1,000 people dead in just 24 hours. Of, is there a sense that Italy is, is now approaching perhaps the peak of this crisis? Well, Carl, what the officials are telling us is that Italy is not near the peak. It is not in the declining phase. In fact, we heard from the representatives of Italy's National Health Institute, and they say the only thing they can point out in terms of a slight light at the end of this dark, dark tunnel is that the curve of contagion appears to be slightly flattening, especially since the 20th of March. And they believe that that is a good sign. Now, the, the president of the Lombardy region, that's the hardest hit region that saw uh, some 50 percent of those deaths that we saw in that one day, close to a thousand, that massive figure. Uh, he said that the region may see a decline in the next few days. Uh, it's hard to uh, understand how these figures work when you see such massive numbers. But what's clear as well as the members of the Institute of National Health have told us, it's inevitable that the lockdown period at least will be extended beyond that 3rd April date that was set. Earlier in this crisis, we'd, we'd seen these uplifting videos of, of Italians singing from their balconies. Uh, what is it like there now? I mean, how difficult is it to keep that sort of spirit going in Italy? Well, Carl, those flash mobs seem to have stopped. Mm. I mean, just dealing with these depressing figures, it's just hard to grasp the immense nature of this tragedy. You're talking about figures that could be a small village, an entire village being obliterated uh, just in the space of 24 hours. It's absolutely heartbreaking. I think um, some Italians, maybe even many Italians, found some solace perhaps on Friday when we saw Pope Francis uh, go to St. Peter's Square and give this prayer uh, to help those that are suffering and to pray for an end to this pandemic. Uh, it was very dramatic, those images of rain pouring on what was an empty St. Peter's Square and the Pope Francis standing in the middle uh, praying for this. At the same time, uh, it's those healthcare workers that are in the front line fighting this battle. Uh, we know so far 46 doctors have died as a result of COVID-19 and more than 6,000 healthcare workers are infected. Yeah, they are the ones, of course, on the front lines of the pandemic. Sima Gupta for us in Rome. Thank you for your reporting. When it comes to social distancing, the Pope is leading by example. Just a few scattered visitors follow the pontiff's prayer service from afar at St. Peter's Square. He compares the pandemic to a storm that has hit almost the entire globe. For weeks now, it has been evening. Thick darkness has gathered over our squares, our streets and our cities. We feel it in the air, we notice in people's gestures, their glances give them away. We find ourselves afraid and lost. A fear that the Pope himself likely shares. Five cases of COVID-19 have been diagnosed in the Vatican so far, one of them reportedly inside the papal residency. We have realized that we are on the same boat, all of us fragile and disoriented, but at the same time important and needed, all of us called to row together, each of us having to comfort the other. On this boat, we are all together. After his address, Francis went on to perform a world premiere. 
he delivered the Urbi et Orbi blessing that is usually saved for holy ceremonies, Easter and Christmas. It is the blessing to the city and the world, even though this time almost no one was there to receive it in person.